What's up, everybody? The national championship game is days away, which means one more opportunity to use the unabated DFS pick'em tool to build our little slips here, our parlays over at Prize Picks and Underdogs. So, like I said, one last game: Washington and Michigan. Let's take a look at the edges over here at unabated.com. And there's not a whole lot to work with. This isn't really all that surprising. These teams are pretty concentrated with what they do. Um, starting with Washington, it's just been a heavy dosage of Dylan Johnson at running back. And then a mixture of two to three receivers throwing a little bit of a tight end. That's what they do. They don't use a lot of different options. So you don't typically see uh, really kind of crazy variances here. Also, uh, the fact that big question mark here. So Dylan Johnson props are not even out due to an injury. So does he play? Does he not? Certainly will impact it in sites and books are not putting out uh, props for the most part in the running game gives us less options to choose from. But specifically looking at Washington, we see Romo Dunze at the top. Uh, we like an under here at 3.4%. This is pretty low. Typically we see something in the, the high 20s to 30s is our one of our top ones. Really, this is a question mark of what happens with Dylan Johnson. Do they, if he is out or very limited, do they pass more? Uh, do they throw it to a Dunze more, even though there's the potential for Will Johnson, star cornerback for Michigan, likely being on him? I don't believe an Alabama receiver had a catch when they targeted Will Johnson. I think there was only two targets his way. So, that is a big thing to think about. In our projections, we don't necessarily take into account something like that because it's just so uh, different. We can't necessarily guarantee that that's going to happen. We might slightly lean one way or the other, but an offense like Washington, I wouldn't be surprised if they do different things to move him around the field and get him away from Will Johnson uh, nonstop. So while it is possible and we even see a little bit of a change here on the board while it is possible we're not going to project anything at this time that suggests his usage will be much lower so i like for the the grand scheme of things this is not the biggest of edges it's not the best of edges but you know this under does make some sense to me uh we want to look at like michael Penix here we see lower on the passing yards this one could be tricky will they pass more without dylan johnson like i've already mentioned I think it's quite possible. I'm personally going to stay away from this one. I, we'd set a negative percentage for uh, edge here. So I don't know why we necessarily would uh, target this one, but keep that in mind as Dylan Johnson's status is cleared up. That more passing would be beneficial to McMillan or let's say Dylan Johnson's fine. He's good to go and they don't target Odunze as much. Well, the over here is 10 yards over, but it's only a negative, only a negative five and a half percent edge. This will be a bigger number if Odunze does see a limited amount of targets thanks to that matchup. Really, it's hard to dig in too much because of this injury situation, but I did want to point out one thing here on prize picks. We see a bigger edge here on Odunze. That number is like nine or 10 yards higher on prize picks. So again, we talk about this week over week. Look at the different books and options that you have to bet from. It's better to bet an under here rather than underdog, obviously, because of the eight to nine yards. Uh, and then here we see a little similar numbers here with the passing yards for Penix. And then we even see a, a Polk pop up. You know, in terms of the receiver distribution at Washington, you know, it's hard to say exactly what they're going to do, just on a general idea, because there have been injuries towards the end of the year with McMillan. Last game against Texas, they really targeted the top three essentially the same. We had them projected, and we continue to have it projected with Odunze getting the most targets, followed by McMillan, a couple percentage points lower, and then about four to six percentage points lower in terms of target share for Polk. So there's another thing to think about. If you think this is going to be a continued spread out attack that targets each of these guys uh, in similar ways, you would want to obviously then lower your personal projection for Odunze and up Polks, which would make this a little bit better of an edge here. So things to think about. Uh, and again, right. So underdog had McMillan at 60 and a half, I believe. And we see with McMillan on price pick 67 and a half. So some varying numbers. Now looking back at underdog in Michigan, this is an interesting one because <clears throat> last, uh, last game, Michigan against Bama, 
a lot of three receiver sets, which we did not project because they just haven't done that essentially all year. Um, so do they go back to their typical two tight end, try to run the ball well, uh, control the clock type of offense like we saw in the second half of the season? We're projecting essentially that with a little bit of Samaj Morgan uh, increase and a little bit more for Tyler Morris. So this is the big situation here is if we see or believe that, you know, if you believe that Michigan's going to go two tight end sets, that's a positive for A.J. Barner in his over one and a half per, uh, receptions. That's going to be conceivably a, 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 a better uh, better thing for Cornelius Johnson and Roman Wilson as these other receivers aren't going to be in the mix as much. Um, and then Colston Loveland dead on at the three and three number. I don't necessarily think that this changes either way. Loveland gets <clears throat> plenty of targets and snaps regardless of three receiver versus two tight end. Um, so I'm not necessarily in on that as much. Uh, and then looking at Blake Corum, a 0.2% edge. Difficult. To me, this number is a little high. I don't think, you know, Washington's defense was beat up by Texas's run game. I don't think, uh, I think you could argue that Baxter and Blue are better runners, but Michigan does have the better offensive line in theory. So does that kind of equal things out? We'll see. You know, two tight end sets would put two tight end sets would push more towards a heavier run game. You know, more emphasis on the carries. Although I just really don't see Corum being penalized uh, with three receiver sets. I think he had something like 16 or 18 carries last game and was pretty on spot with his typical usage in terms of percentages. If there are Donovan Edwards numbers, which I don't believe there are, I would suspect he gets a little bit of a boost with. Uh, two tight end sets compared to the three receiver sets. It's really a tricky situation with Sharon Moore and what he was doing offensively. So two big question marks that are really impacting the props here. We're probably not going to know a whole lot going into the, when this game starts, you'll have to kind of think about how you visualize the game script playing out and going from there. Ultimately these edges are pretty tough. Wouldn't invest a ton of action into it, but of course you can't, not play the final game of the year. You got to throw something out there. Uh, and certainly, hopefully that you use the unabated.com DFS pick them tool to build and construct your parlays. There is a free five day code SMIZ, S M I Z Z. Yeah, that's right. Two Z's. Uh, gives you five free days to try it out. Make sure you check it out. And, and lastly, enjoy the final game of the season. Thanks, everybody.